What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about organic cotton and whether or not that is sustainable. As I did some deep diving into scientific papers and I found stuff that is, well, let's say questionable. And I want to share that with you so that you can make up your own mind in whether or not you want to go for organic cotton or not. Of all the agriculture area available around the world, 2.4% of that is used to grow cotton. And that cotton crop requires 6% of the total amount of pesticides used worldwide. So a lot of pesticides. Only 1% of all the cotton produced around the world is organic cotton. And the remaining 99% is conventional cotton that is known to be polluting for our water and soil, but also is harmful for the farmers making this type of cotton. But first things first, what actually is organic cotton? To be certified as organic, a lot of steps are involved and these begin even before a seed is planted. As you might have guessed, organic plants are grown from organic seeds, but not any seed is magically organic. Also that seed needs to be produced organically. This means that the strict regulations that are in place for organic crops also apply for organic seed production. There are a lot of strict regulations in place to be certified as organic. And just by growing a crop without harmful pesticides is not enough to be certified as organic. In order for a farmer to make the switch from conventional to organic crops, their land needs to go through a transition period. This is usually around two years differs a bit per crop, in which the farmer cannot use their land for organic crop production. While they're only allowed to use organic fertilizers and pesticides on their field, but they're not allowed to sell the crop that is grown on that field as organic yet. Or the farmer could just decide to not use the land at all. But before a farmer actually is allowed to grow organic crops on that field, the field needs to be tested to be sure there are no residues left of non-organic pesticides in the soil. And because of this long transition period and also very costly, because either you're not using the land or you can't sell the crop for a decent price, farmers are very reluctant to switch to organic. There are a lot of steps involved in the production of organic cotton, but there are even more steps involved when you need to turn this organic cotton into an organic garment. All the steps involved in making a garment, like spinning, dyeing, knitting and trading, needs to meet certain environmental and social standards before they can be certified as organic. So what are some of these criteria? Well, if you're a farmer and you produce both organic and conventional, whatever crop that may be, the entire production of the crop needs to be separate from each other, meaning there is no overlap in produce. This can be cotton, this can be tomatoes, this can be cabbages. Everything needs to be kept separate. The tools they use, the trucks they use, everything they use on the land, it needs to be kept separate. In order to prevent contamination of the organic produce, with the non-organic produce. So if a farmer produces both organic and non-organic, it needs a lot of equipment and a lot of land area to work with both. Other criteria that organic garments need to meet is that the colorants used are safe and organically proved and their wastewater management needs to make sure that there are no harmful substances ending in their wastewater. Obviously, a lot of harmful substances are prohibited Child labor is prohibited and they need to make sure that their employees receive a decent wage and have safe working conditions. So there are a lot of steps involved in creating an organic garment and a lot of certifications need to be met before it is officially an organic garment. All these certifications cost a lot of money for both the farmers and the manufacturers of the garment. So they spend a lot of money in certification and unfortunately, we have to pay a little more if we want an organic garment. Now let's talk about the first issue with organic cotton, water usage. 
We all know that our clothing requires a lot of water. A jeans requires approximately 8,000 liters, while a t-shirt requires 2,700 liters of water. So a lot of water that is needed for cotton production, dyeing, all the steps involved in creating your jeans or t-shirt. Well, I found some research data on the water requirement of organic cotton, and they differ a lot. Some researchers say that organic cotton requires 91% less water, while other researchers say that organic cotton requires more water. What's true? Well, let's use our common sense here. If you have an organic cotton plant next to a regular conventional cotton plant, okay, do you really think that the yield of an organic cotton plant is similar to the yield of a non-organic plant when it received 91% less water? I don't think so. So, But why would organic cotton require more water? Well, it's not per se organic cotton requiring more water, it's conventional cotton requiring less water. Because, well, it's genetically modified for high yield, pest resistance to reduce the amount of pesticides. More details on that later, don't worry. But also drought resistance, which in a lot of areas around the world is a big problem. So when you genetically modify a crop to be grown in the desert, yes, they're really working on that. It would save a lot of space, a lot of water, because yes, a plant still needs water, but not so much as the non-genetically modified one, which would result in a crop that requires much less water compared to the organic one. But what did they do in this research? Well, if you compare an organic cotton plant that is grown in an area with a lot of rainfall with a cotton plant that is genetically modified to grow about anywhere, you can plant it almost in the desert, but also in a tropical rainforest and it will be just fine. But if you compare a cotton plant that is grown in a relatively dry area with a cotton plant that is grown in an area with a lot of rain and you compare the data about irrigation then obviously the organic cotton plant will receive less water compared to the conventional plant because well in one area there's more rain the other area doesn't have any rain so you're comparing apples to oranges here, so yeah. So the data I found was conflicting. If they would have done a research where they grow a field with organic cotton next to a field with regular cotton and then compared how much irrigation the organic field needs compared to the irrigation a conventional cotton field needs and then compare the two, that would make much more sense. But I couldn't find that data, unfortunately. So. Does organic cotton use less water? I couldn't find the data, I don't know. So regarding the water usage, I'm not really sure yet whether you want organic or conventional, but I do know that turning that cotton into a garment for the organic cotton one, the wastewater management is strictly regulated. Only wastewater from an organic cotton factory needs to be treated so it is no longer harmful for the environment. There are no such regulations regarding conventional cotton garments. Next topic is pesticide use. The difference between organic and non-organic pesticide use in foods is much different compared to the pesticide use for organic and non-organic cotton. In foods, the difference in pesticides is, well, smaller, much smaller, because pesticides sprayed on crops that are for consumption need to be strictly regulated because you could ingest it. While for cotton, we're not eating cotton, we're wearing it. So 
the regulations are different. And the main focus for farmers of cotton is high yield because it's simple, high yield, more profit. They want as much yield as possible. So everything that might affect yield like weeds, pests, bacteria, anything will be killed as fast as possible without paying attention to contamination of the soil and our groundwaters. And who's to blame for this? We are as consumers because we want clothing fast and cheap. So manufacturers produce clothing as fast as possible while cotton producers again produce as fast as possible and this comes at a price. Not only for the people working in the clothing factories but also our soils as like I said farmers need to use a lot of fertilizers and pesticides. So how's organic cotton different? Well organic cotton cannot be grown with harmful pesticides and fertilizers. Only fertilizers and pesticides that have met the organic certification are allowed in these fields. Pesticides like copper sulfate is allowed, but also plant derivatives that are naturally a pesticide. Did you see the video where I talked about um, soap nuts? Soap nuts are a natural insecticide. This is an example of insecticides that can be used on organic crops as it is a plant derivative. So pesticides that are allowed on organic cotton need to be certified. But what many people don't know is that even though these are certified as safe to use, but in high quantities, these might still be harmful for our soils, for the environment, maybe even for your health. Why would they use high quantities? Well, organic cotton is again not genetically modified like regular cotton. So regular cotton is genetically modified not only for high yield, but also pest resistance. So even though harmful pesticides may be used on non-organic crops, the amount they use is lower because, well, the crop is already pest resistant. While for organic cotton, the plant isn't pest resistant, so they need a lot of pesticides to make sure they have yield. And also organic cotton farmers want a yield that is as high as possible because, well, high yield, more money. So what do they do for high yield? Use as much fertilizer as possible. Is that beneficial for the soil? Not always, so it is less harmful for the soil compared to fertilizers for regular cotton, but they use more of it. They use almost the maximum limit. I don't know. Another reason why organic cotton crops might need more insecticide, pesticide, herbicides is because, well, over time, insects and other pests might become resistant to the pesticide used. Meaning a farmer needs to use more and more and more so that the insecticide has the same effect as before. So again, more and more pesticides are used because the farmer doesn't want to lose his crop. So what about soil and water contamination from the pesticides? Well, obviously the organic ones aren't supposed to harm the environment. And this means that the farmer needs to protect its soils from pollutants and only uses, well, safe fertilizers and pesticides. And research also has shown that organic fields have more uh, biodiversity in the soil, meaning more diverse insects, nematodes, worms, stuff like that. Which is obviously beneficial for the crop and is due to less toxic residues in the soil. While the soil for non-organic crops often has a buildup of residual pesticides and fertilizers that have been used in the years before the current crop is on the field, meaning that there are more harmful chemicals present in this soil, which will affect all life first in the soil and later when water drains it, also in our waters. But so how about farming practices? Well, for organic crops, crop rotation is required, meaning that one year you can grow one crop and the next year you grow another. While for non-organic crops, monocropping is a big problem, meaning 
Each year they grow the same crop over and over and over again, applying the same fertilizers, applying the same pesticides, meaning all the residual chemicals from these pesticides, fertilizers will build up in the soil. While crop rotation helps with soil fertility and with the mitigation of insects in the field. A lot of herbicides are not allowed in organic crops, meaning that the weeds that grow in between the plants need to be removed by hand. Why do they remove weeds? Well, they compete for the same nutrients in the soil compared to your crop. So if the weed absorbs these nutrients, it is not for your crop and therefore you might have a lower yield. So you want to remove the weeds and in organic farming, this is often done by hand. Yep, manual labor. So there is much more work involved in farming organically and therefore we pay more for organic produce. So the difference between greenhouse gas production for organic and non-organic cotton. This is mainly due to the fact that organic cotton has a lot of manual labor while non-organic crops has a lot of machines. So machines produce more greenhouse gases and the production of fertilizers for organic crops have a lower carbon footprint because they're all natural. Well, the fertilizers for non-organic crops are mostly synthetic that needs to be made artificially and therefore require more resources and produce more greenhouse gases. And the difference between greenhouse gases becomes even bigger after harvest because the dyeing and knitting process of organic cotton needs to meet organic standards. In order to meet those standards, manufacturers need to prove that each year they try to reduce their greenhouse emissions as much as possible. And they need to show their data accordingly. I already talked a little bit about genetic modification. 91% of the cotton production around the world is genetically modified, either for high yield, pest resistance, drought resistance, or a combination of all. This is a problem for crops that are grown organically. Why? Contamination is possible, meaning that a non-organic crop and an organic crop can cross. Now for cotton, this isn't really a big issue because cotton is a self-pollinator, meaning it can cross, but it usually doesn't. This means that if you have a field with organic cotton right next to a field with regular cotton, the chance of crossing is minimal. For cotton, this is the case because self-pollinator. But if somehow the fields of organic and non-organic were too close and there is contamination of the GM crop with the organic crop and they find that out because obviously they check every once in a while to see how pure the organic crop is. In that case, a farmer needs to invest time and money to find the source of this contamination in order to remain certified as organic and again increasing the cost for the farmer. The biggest difference between organic and non-organic cotton is how the employees are treated. To be certified as organic your employees need to make their own decision whether or not they want to work, have decent wages and decent hours and they need a safe working environment. While for regular cotton this isn't that strictly certified as it is for organic. So is organic cotton more sustainable than regular cotton? Regarding water use and pesticide use, I'm not sure because the research data is conflicting and I wanna see more research before I make up my mind. But I do know that if you want your garment to be made by people who receive a decent wage, decent working hours and work in a safe environment, go for organic cotton. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you next time. Bye guys.